Welcome to you great folks out there. Thank you for joining me. This is Andre with Yup I Said It. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and hit the bell notification so that you get all of the updates. It is getting hot. You know, it's getting spicy. I hope y'all saw that debate last night. Had to get up early today, and I said, let me get right up to this because they're already going to be gaslighting. They're already going to be trying to control the narrative, okay? CNN's got to control the narrative. Uh... They know that Joe Biden is absolutely done. That's the good news. They know that he's at, he's done. They want to go to the White House and they want to tell him to resign. They want to tell him to step aside. Uh, there are talks of Gavin Newsom getting prepared right now. They want to usher him out and offer him up as a sacrifice. Trump will smoke him, okay? All they have to actually do is run a camera and just take some uh, photos uh, and take some uh, video of California and what it looks like. And, and then just put it to the top. Do you want your city and your state to look like this? That's all Trump and I'm going to do, run ads all over this uh, monkey. So uh, CNN uh, has admitted this, and there's so many clips here. I'm going to play as many as I can fit in this segment. Uh, but they've uh, said so many horrible things about how Biden um, turned out last, how it turned out last night for Biden. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty shocked that they would actually admit it. Uh, <laughs> I watched Joe Scarborough and Mika uh, watch a little bit of their show this morning, and their derangement uh, continues. Uh, they, they're not going to uh, retract anything <laughs> that they've said about Joe Biden, even though he's an utter failure. Um, and, you know, he's just he's a feeble old man, uh, like they say. So I'm going to gather all the clips. Of, but right now I want to react to this uh, panel. Uh, right here that CNN has. There's probably a studio people that work there. I don't know. <laughs> they probably are completely biased, but we're going to uh, listen to what they have to say, and I want to uh, react to this. Anderson, we are right outside of Detroit in McCobb uh, County at McCobb uh, Community College. It's a really important moment because, as you well know, this is a very important swing state. It went for Trump, then it went for Biden. But here in Macomb County, the, the votes actually went for Trump. And we were sitting with undecided voters to figure out what they were thinking. We got the reactions in real time, and there were some very consequential moments here. I want to begin, though, with everyone by giving a show of hands. I want to ask the people who are with me here today, many of you came in undecided, in fact, most of you, by watching this debate, a show of hands, how many of you have now made up your mind? This is unbelievable to think about how impactful and influential this very moment was. I want to get a sense from all of you. We were all watching the appearance of the two candidates. What did you make of how they both performed and the way that they were appearing in the camera and beyond? Who had a strong reaction, especially to the age component? I would have to say, after watching the debate and watching how Biden handled himself and answering the questions, it reassured me of my, his unassurance be able to lead our country. I'm Whoever that woman is they pick, I mean, she's absolutely 100% right. All of them should say the exact same darn thing. They really should. But this is, I, I want to let you guys watch this because I want you to see the contrast on from what she's saying to what the other ones say. Because some people hate Donald Trump so much. The mainstream media's got them hating Donald Trump. They, they trained them to hate him so much and lied to them so badly that they still can't shake the derangement. It's wild. Conservative is hesitant, very not cognitive. Seemed like his data, he was missing his numbers. So very concerning. That's 500 million, 500 billion. It's all the same thing. Y'all catch that clip? <laughs> Yo, Joe Biden is garbage, okay? All right, he's garbage, and he's destroying our country because of his cognitive decline. All right, that's why they picked him in the first place, because they knew that this was happening to him. Somebody I don't think that needs to lead our country. Does anyone share that same opinion? A couple of you do. Who does not? <laughs> Let me ask you. One of the big things that a lot of people forget, um, when we are typically speaking in day-to-day -day life, we tend to stutter as well. So sometimes it will take time to be able to think about what you're going to say, but regardless, when it comes to a strong leader and what we're looking for in a leader, I'm looking for somebody that I trust to be able to uphold policies that will protect me and are more concerned for the general well-being of everybody in the United States, which I got more from Biden, considering he did a lot more talking about... Uh what which Biden was she listening to? That's what I'm curious. She looked like she might be paid. All right, they hired her to say this. 
Uh, I don't understand why. Who would understand what the things that Joe Biden was saying? Did you guys hear anything that he was saying last night? I didn't hear hardly anything. When he did talk, when he did have a like a splurt of energy, <laughs> it quickly got uh you know diffused <laughs> when he cut the mic off. Uh, I just don't I don't understand what policy she was talking about uh, because all of his policies actually suck in my opinion. All right. Freeing up our economy, that is a great policy. Closing up the border, those are two wonderful policies. And that's all Trump really talked about. Uh, he actually talked about it quite a bit. But the two main ones, uh, which is uh, the, mo- the, the more concerning two, are the closed borders and the economy. Once you close the borders and we can have some energy independence, our costs can go down, uh, we, can, we can work on everything else will fall right in place. But this woman... Uh, apparently was watching Sesame Street when the debates were on. Policies, what he's done and what he plans to do. Whereas on the other side from Trump, all I really heard was I've done this and it was the best ever, but I never heard what it was. Or I heard that Biden was the worst ever, but I never heard why. So there was a lot that was left. If somebody needs to tell you why Biden is horrible and and what policies that are destroying this country right now, if somebody needs to cluck you upside your head and tell you that... You should be working at McDonald's. Unclear for me. So while he may have appeared like a stronger candidate on paper, there was a lot missing in terms of actual debate. You're nodding along, Victor. Why do you say so? I would agree with that. And the rules of the debate were you could not bring notes or any written material. So I'd defy anybody to try to speak for 90 minutes and not forget some facts. And the fact that, you know, he struggled with that. He's always had a stuttering problem. But like she said, I think the leadership qualities are there. There was a very big moment as well. The leadership qualities? Who would he be leading? A bunch of elderly people to the ice cream truck? Uh, He couldn't do that. If you saw the debates and you watched it all the way to the end, uh, Joe Biden had trouble coming down the stair, okay? His wife had to get on the stage and help him. His wife had to get on stage and help him down like four stairs, four or five stairs, okay? Leadership, the man literally can't lead himself down a flight of stairs. So these people we know are absolutely oblivious, yep. In terms of a conversation about the felony convictions, as you know, there are 34 counts out of Manhattan for the former president of the United States. That was actually addressed today. I want to play for you all again and remind you of that moment. (laughs) He could be a convicted felon as soon as he gets out of office. Joe could be a convicted felon with all of the things that he's done. He's done horrible things. All facts, horrible things, (laughs) you know. The enemy always tries to accuse you of what they've been doing. They've always tried to accuse Trump of the exact things that they've been doing. Okay? And and th- these fools know that we're on to them. Okay? That's why they're having a hard time uh, finding somebody to jump in here and save Joe Biden. Because can't nobody do it. They can't save him. He's got himself in some very hot water. Okay? of the death caused at the the border uh telling the ukrainian people that we're going to want a billion dollars or you change the prosecutor otherwise you're not getting a billion dollars if i ever said that that's quid pro quo how many of you heard that conversation between trump and of course the debaters talking about the so-called weaponization of the government who believes and agrees with trump here that he was only targeted because he was a political opponent of biden hey joe vance wendy you kind of grimace for a second as to that agreement why i definitely think that was a political move um with the timing of how the charges were brought forward. Bingo! A monkey could see it. All right? A monkey could see it. Um, when you weaponize the entire judicial system uh, against your opponent that you're running against, it is third world country. Trump is absolutely right. A third world countries do that kind of stuff. Why? Because the uh, opponent that is mostly the Democrat, uh, actually all of the time the Democrat, Uh, They don't have anything to run on that's healthy for the economy or healthy for the people. And the people know that. So in an attempt to win the election, they have to lie. Okay, 
That's exactly what they got to do. They have to make up a story. They have to make you look bad. And yeah, the, the woman's right. The time of it all, it's no coincidence. And a monkey could see it. But some people really wouldn't care about that because they don't understand what the hell is going on. All right. They just don't get it. And even the charges themselves. Uh, I'm sure there's many corporations who employ have employees who, who take care of the uh, financial documents uh, that write down a legal expense and you just pay the bill. I mean, I, I don't I wouldn't question every legal expense on a report, but that's a felony. Um, Let me ask you, Steve, as well on this point, you seem to be nodding along. What's your reaction? Uh, I think that the uh, it's not so much the crime, it's the process or the, the, the process leading up. They're trying to use up his time so he can't campaign, use his money, his resources to pay for legal fees so he can't compete with with Biden. Um, I think that. Um, and why would somebody need to do that? You know, that's the question that everybody needs to ask themselves. Why would someone need to uh, use that kind of strategy? It seems a little bit slimy and slithery like a snake, doesn't it? Because that's exactly what it is. All right. That's the serpent uh, doing the dirty works uh, for his uh, donors. Uh, but if, if you have something strong and powerful to run on. Hey, who could beat you? Because <laughs> everybody wants financial relief. All right. Everybody would like some financial relief. All right. Uh, so, so if you're the one saying that I'm going to create some financial relief, I'm going to keep us safe. I'm going to close the borders. Yeah, everybody would unanimously vote for you, basically. All right. There'll be a couple of monkeys, uh, chimpanzees that, uh, you know, decide to go against the grain because they feel sorry for a feeble old man. But we ain't got nothing to do with that. His mental acuity is a lot better than Biden's. Biden seems to be very tired. Um, actually, I'm tired of both of them because they just keep going back and forth, back and forth. We just need to get some younger people in there that have clean. Uh, I don't think we need younger people. Uh, we just need somebody doing the right thing. It ain't got nothing to do with age. Uh, Warren Buffett's 91 years old, making plenty of money and making some really good investments, I'm pretty sure, and still sharp as a tech. Like they said, Biden, how Biden was sharp. Uh, Biden's sh not sharp at all, okay? Okay. Uh, but Warren Buffett is. Uh, it's not about the age. It's about the intention, it's about the content of the character, it's about the policies, it's about what you intend to actually do for the people. Uh, Trump's got all those uh, covered. Yeah, Trump, Trump's a, a, a mastermind at, at you know, conversation, he's a mastermind at business, uh, and you know people just get tired of the bickering, but it's only because the enemy's been lying. It's only because the Biden administration and his cronies have been lying, so Trump's got to always defend himself. So people are just tired of the two. But it ain't got. It's, it's. It doesn't take any credibility away from Donald Trump. Donald Trump is still the same person. Like he said in the debate, and I love what he said. He doesn't have to do this. He could be somewhere on, in, in one of his resorts or somewhere or anywhere else in the world, uh, enjoying himself. He doesn't really have to do this. But why does he do it? He says he's doing it because he sees what Joe Biden's uh, doing to our country, and he knows what, what's going on. He wants to actually help. All right, so don't don't be uh, you know turned off by this this uh, you know constant back and forth because the enemy's lying. So whenever people lie and you know that they're lying, you have to defend yourself. It's literally the only thing you can do is con defend yourself with facts, and that's exactly what Trump's been doing the entire time. He's going to be exonerated entirely. So I want to go ahead. I want to try to find some of these clips here. I want to play a couple of clips from CNN because they had some pretty rough things to say about Joe Biden. And they should have said this all along. They've been lying for three and a half years. Okay. They've been, they've been tell, getting on TV lying to everybody about Joe Biden and how wonderful he is. All right. At the same time, destroying our economy. At the same time, destroying our way of living and our way of life. This is what they've been doing. They've been making it hard for everyone. Uh, but they've been telling you, they literally have been coming on TV telling you that it's not real. Now, I want you to look at this clip here at right at the beginning uh, when Joe Biden's coming off of the stage, his wife has to go on stage and, uh, you know, wheel him down the steps. But I want to I want you to see how they try to cover up when he's actually coming down the stairs, because they realize that the optics are really bad for Joe Biden, especially when he's going down the stairs. 
uh, and then when he's on the stage, he doesn't know what's going on. This is so bad, guys. And for anybody looking at this saying that Joe Biden's actually a really good president, and he's doing really good, he's just old, you're, you're losing your head, okay? That's why we don't trust you to make decisions because you decide that this guy is actually uh, appropriate to be president uh, when this type of stuff is happening. It's not funny anymore, okay? It's not funny. People are not going to tolerate this kind of stuff, man. So I want you to take a look at this. I'm just getting a little heated, guys. I'm telling you. It just makes me upset. Look look at this. The president and former president making their way okay, off she the goes scene out. and debate stage. Looks like she, she uh, grabs, Joe Biden, the first lady, uh, has now come watch out. The former cameraman president Trump walking try to off cover the stage. everything up. But the first debate of the 2024 Biden. campaign and the early... You're going to see Joe Biden slowly go down the stage. He, can't, he doesn't even know how to what, what size step to take because uh, he can't see down. It's crazy, man. Elder abuse. Watch the cameraman. Look. This presidential debate ever now in right the books and in front of the voters tonight, along with Aaron Burnett. The first word on what those voters up. might make of it from our political professionals, from our see. CNN flash poll and swing state focus look, group. See. Oh, they just missed it because we, we saw how slow he had to step down. All right. Crazy, man. So I'm going to go ahead and react to this clip because CNN's got a lot of colorful things to say about Joe Biden. Fact checks from our Daniel we Dale and new reporting from inside both campaigns. With me here, CNN political commentator Scott Jennings, Kate Bedingfield, David Urban, Van Jones, Alyssa Farr Griffin, and Newsnight anchor Abby Phillip and David Axelrod, and CNN chief national correspondent John King. John, let me start with you. Your thoughts. Got the whole team Anderson, out. This was a game-changing debate in the sense that right now as we speak, there is a deep a wide and a very aggressive panic in the Democratic Party. <laughs> it started minutes into the debate and it continues right now. It involves party strategists, it involves elected officials, it involves fundraisers. And they're having conversations about the president's... He's setting the record straight for everybody, just letting everybody know, look, this is what we're going to be talking about. We're going to actually talk about Joe Biden's decline. Finally, in front of the people, guys. We're going to have to face the music. All right, so they're going to all have their takes on it, but he's, he's setting the tone, letting them know we're not going to try to bull crap anymore, guys. We got to face the facts that the whole world could see this. Now, now my wife's grandmother lives all the way in Kyrgyzstan. And she's like 90-something years old. When my wife talked to her, she said, she said Joe Biden's in mental decline. That's what she said. She said we're in trouble in the United States. Her grandmother said that. Okay. That's wild, man. People all over the world are watching this. So don't think that we're the only country paying attention. Okay. The whole world is watching this. I want to see the ratings. Performance, which they think was dismal, which they think will hurt other people down the party in the ticket. And they're having conversations about what they should do about it. Some of those conversations include, should we go to the White House and ask the president to step aside? Others are, other of the conversations are about, should we go to the White House and ask? <laughs> Should we, he said, should we go to the White House and ask if the president should resign? What the hell you say? Yeah, no, you do need to ask Joe Biden anything. He's incoherent. You understand that? He can't comprehend anything. He, he's, he's toast. He's done. All right. He's a dead man walking. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a zombie. What you going to ask him? Can you please step down as a president? What the hell is he going to say? I just, I just, he, don't, he don't know what to say, okay? Uh, we probably wouldn't understand anyway. Anybody acting like they could understand anything Joe Biden said in that debate is absolutely nuts. I'm sorry. Uh, should prominent Democrats go public with that call? Because they feel this dis debate was so terrible. Uh, they do say in, in moments in the debate later, the president got better and got his footing. But then at the end, even his closing statement was a little halting. The contrast between the two candidates. Let me be clear. None of them, and a lot of Republicans... Don't think Donald Trump had a great night. Donald Trump broke the fact check machine more than I can count tonight. That will be on the record as we. He broke the fact check machine. What does this machine look like? I want to see it. Does it look like the, uh, the Dominion voting machine? That's what I want to know. What, what does a fact check machine looks like? What, who, who is it? Who is the fact check machine? Where, what does it look like? Show us, show us your, your fact check machine. We like to fact check the fact check machine. That's what we would like to do. Okay. We would like to see what the hell it looks like. All right, because we're, we're not stupid here. A monkey could see uh, that you know, Donald Trump actually clearly has the better policies, uh, probably the last 50 presidents that we had. OK. All right. Greatest president ever. All right. So I don't know what the hell y'all are talking about over there. CIA, uh, CNN. OK, I, we don't know what you're talking about. All right. Donald Trump didn't lie about anything, period. 
He told facts after fact after fact after fact. That's why you guys have to prop up Sleepy Joe. That's why Joe Biden is in decline because it's obvious the people are dissatisfied with him and he knows it. So it's causing even faster decline. The only person lying here is CNN, MSNBC, and NBC, and ABC, and CBS. All the alphabets. You guys are always lying, okay? Get out of here. We go forward. He refused to answer some very specific and direct questions about his conduct, about January 6th and what all. So that will be dealt with out there. And sometimes there's a parallel universe between the... Uh, he didn't refuse to answer. He didn't refuse to answer. He just rebuttaled Joe Biden after he said what he said. And then they had to ask him a question again. He gave him 48 to 68 seconds to answer the rest of the question. And he did. He answered it with truth. And you can find out if you go and do the research that he's actually telling the truth. Where's your fact check machine? Who is that? A bunch of liberals with purple hair and, and, and pink lipstick. Uh, who are these guys with fact checking everything? All right, because we like to fact check too. We're going to fact check everything. You can't run cover for Joe Biden anymore. You guys are in trouble and you lied. Okay. That's the bottom line here. Political elites and the American people, it'd be nice to see what the voters say, but I can tell you it started minutes in. It started with the first couple of answers, and it has continued throughout the night from a, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, to what do we do about this? I, and it involves very senior people in the Democratic Party, including elected officials, saying we have a problem. And just to co-sign what John is saying, I mean, the panic that I am hearing from democrats is not like anything that i have heard yeah in this yeah. campaign so far why did it have to, why did it take someone to, that you have to hear it from somebody else that that's what the question we should be asking why in the world do you if this is something that you never heard um so you're waiting on them to tell you something uh, you're waiting on them to tell you what to say uh, so you can tell us because it's nothing that you never heard before. Why can't you make your own conclusions? That just goes to show you that these people are paid to lie to you. OK, they don't they don't come up with their own conclusions. It's not real journalism. All right. This is paid to play. That's what this is. That's all it is all day long. Trump knows it. Everybody knows it. OK, everybody knows it. All right. Everybody knows it. So you guys, uh, what would you hear? Tell us what you heard. And a lot of it has to do with, first of all, there was a deep frustration about Trump's lies. I mean, he lied a lot tonight. Right. But the, the problem for Biden was that. Notice they got the, they got to slip that in there because Trump lied. OK, they got to keep lying and lying and lying. Trump lied. OK, first of all, first of all, Trump lied. You know, that's the first of all. So at least Joe Biden's telling the truth. No, he's not. Joe Biden's not telling the truth. He didn't tell the truth about his policy. Is Trump lying about the borders? Is he lying about the uh, borders and the uh, and the uh, un undocumented people coming in? Is he lying about all that? Is he lying about the fentanyl crisis? Is Trump lying about the economy? Because the economy sucks right now. Anybody else feel that? Hmm. I wonder. I wonder what the Trump is actually lying about. Because Trump just couldn't stop talking about the illegal uh, people coming in and the uh, in the uh, uh, economy. Tell me what Trump is lying about, honey. Yeah, exactly. Trump was able to take some sometimes incredible falsehoods and turn them into some kind of argument whereas biden's answers were in a lot of cases not falsehoods once you ask the hood was false okay go and ask the hood how much they are paying for their groceries right now uh honey won't you step into the hood of chicago or hood of baltimore hood of philadelphia hood of new york city in the bronx or somewhere and ask the hood what the falsehoods were you were talking about because the economy sucks okay all right, that's the truth right there. Everybody knows that that is the truth. That's the elephant in the room. Nobody wants to talk about is that economy, I tell you, for some reason. But all of a sudden, Trump is lying. Okay, I guess he's only telling the truth about the borders and about inflation, huh? Okay, what is Joe Biden lying about? Coherent, deeply problematic that he was not able to uh, take pretty straightforward answers and answer them to the American public. And, and then also at some points, bringing things up that teed up Trump attacks. So uh, there's a, a real concern here tonight that there's been some real damage done that cannot be undone. Biden solidified the perce perception among voters, but especially among his base, they were hoping that tonight would be a game changer. They are now seeing a president who is in the white house who they do not necessarily believe can can do this for another four years translation they don't like his ass okay 
They don't like his ass. They never liked his ass. But now it's really apparent because they he, they agreed to the debate. Trump. They didn't think Trump would accept the debate. Trump accepted the debate uh, under all of the ridiculous terms that they set and the regulations like they like to do. Okay. And Trump accepted it. And guess what? Trump crushed his head flat. Okay. That's what he did. Why did he crush his head flat? Uh, he crushed his head flat because he kept calm. He nailed him on the points. He let Joe Biden talk. Joe Biden didn't have his booster shot. Uh, Joe Biden came out there uh, like a rubber band. Okay. Weak. All right. Weak. Weak and feeble, like they said. I want to show you some more clips of CNN going in on their boy Joe, bro. And I think there's a lot of people who are going to want to see him consider um, taking a different course now. Uh, we're still far from our convention. And there is time for this party to figure out a different way forward if he will allow us to do that. Um, but that was uh, not what we needed from Joe Biden. And it's personally painful for a lot of people. It's not just panic. It's pain of what we saw tonight. Remember Van Jones was crying? Remember that? Remember he was crying his, his tears away on CNN uh, because Joe Biden became president and he was so happy as a man he could now tell his kids that, yeah, you know, all that. Remember all that? Van Jones. Now it's the same man telling us, like three and a half years later, that Joe Biden's in mental decline and his brain is shutting down. How can you trust any of these people? They always wind up being wrong. <laughs> it wasn't just uh, Van Jones, though, uh, telling you that Joe Biden's having a mental breakdown. Joy Reid couldn't help herself. She had to tell you the truth. This is absolutely amazing. I'm so glad that we got this on film because you would never believe it. <laughs> Take a look at this. As well, so I understand not feeling well. And, you know, obviously Joe Biden comes in with certain deficits. He has a stutter. You know, he is it, it is more difficult for him to communicate for that reason. So there's a lot to mitigate the way that he speaks. And you can understand it. And we've observed him for a long time. That said, um, I, too, was on the phone throughout much of the debate um, with um, Obama world people with the Democrats, um, with people who are political operatives, with campaign operatives. My phone really never stopped uh, buzzing throughout. And the um, universal reaction was somewhere approaching panic. Hmm. Um, the people who were texting with me were um, very concerned um, about uh, President Biden seeming extremely feeble. Pretty strong language. Extremely feeble. That's what Jory Reid said. Extremely feeble. <laughs> that means he's toast, okay? That means that, that they're planning something else. This is the last straw. Joe Biden doesn't have it anymore. They need to show him evidence of himself declining because he seemed to think uh, that he's still got it. And they have to ask him to step aside. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. It's like taking the keys from your 103 year old grandfather who's only like 80 something. You know, it's crazy. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we all t we told them all oh, this would happen. Everybody knows that, man. Like, you know, it, you know, vindicated, vindicated, vindicated. Uh, but now what? Now what? So, so I'm hearing that Gavin Newsom's going to be coming out with his slick ass, uh, with his hair slicked back. I'd say, Trump, if you can get this message, take some videos of California. Just take videos and just have someone just talk over top of it, you know. Look at all the homeless on the street. Most of them probably veterans. All right, look at all the all the money spent. Woo, a lot of stones are being turned over. A lot of creepy, crawly creatures are coming from under those stones. They were comfortable in, in the darkness, you know. But people are turning the stones over uh, and, and letting the light shine on them, all right? You got to dry them out. You can't just let those stones stay on top of those creatures, all right? We got we to gotta expose them to the light. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. All right, so if Gavin Newsom want to step out here and get smoked, he can get smoked too. All right, anybody who want the smoke getting smoke on sight. That's how it's going to roll right now. That's how we're carrying it. I know that's how Trump's carrying it. He ain't playing no games, all right? He's going all the way uh, because he understands what it takes to win right here. And we understand as well. So we're not going to let up ever, forever, like forever. All right, we're going to keep nailing this forever, all right? Forever. On the streets, on video, I don't care where it is, we're going to go uh, for, to all four corners of the earth, all right? That ought to scare him a little bit, all four corners. You understand? So, uh, you know, this has been Yep, I Said It, guys. We're going to keep on tuning in because uh, this is going to get funny. <laughs> the memes are going to be 
absolutely remarkable. Until next time, like, share, and subscribe. Please hit the bell notification. Hope you watch all the way to the end because it's been a great one. Thank you.